Old School Co-op, just give you kind of an update, uh, kind of a background of who we are. Uh, we're uh, Surf Skate Science. Tony and I have um, been involved in skateboarding, oh my gosh, for probably like 28 something years. Uh, we both ran a skate park for many, many years. Um, both of our uh, boys um, are crazy skateboarders. I mean, they've we've gone all over skateboarding. Um, but the unique thing about us is that um, we had an opportunity to move to West Texas where uh, we moved from Florida to West Texas and we had to adapt in the school. And so we pulled our kids out of school um, when they were like in eighth grade and uh, we basically homeschooled them um, all the way since they were in college, um, which is pretty neat because skateboarding and surfing has played such a center part of uh, so that's how like surf skate science came um my my oldest son is an architect he works uh in a firm but he's a skateboarder like he's in france right now like he wow. took two weeks off and he's just skateboarding like going everywhere he loves how skateboards i mean skate parks are designed he used to come out and watch me we used to go all over and do things yeah, like yeah. the build ramps. Yeah, yeah. Anywhere I needed to go, I, I would go with them. And um, my other son is 17 and he's actually in a technical school. We homeschooled him all the way through technical school. And now he's a welder. So his whole heart is to uh, weld obstacles. And his teacher in school kind of helps him out with that. So uh, he, he, he's kind of working in kind of like a STEM career, but he's also following his love and his dream um, to build some of the world's best skate park. That's his kind of idea. So um, how awesome. we do it, just to give you kind of like a little background, is how we do it is we, we spend about 45 minutes where we do a science lab and we transform a local skate park, a local beach break into a classroom. And we learn about science and technology, engineering, art, math. And um, what we're talking about now is the future of kind of your craft and what it's going to look like um, and the technology. I can't speak too much about it as much as you can, but I will tell you I'm a huge fan of 411. If I remember, I started getting into it in 1993. Uh, I remember the kind of the first videos were coming out back then. And um, I still have some of the the VHS ones. You know, I said they're like um, huge collector items of mine. Um, because back then we didn't really have social media. We had to kind of like hang out at our local skate park or local skate shop. And we had to wait for these VHS tapes or or something, you know. And yep, I just yep. remember even the technology of even taking a picture where, you know, you would take a photograph and you would have to get it developed. And there used to be that waiting process. So um, I'm going to introduce you a little bit. I know students are starting Perfect. to get on. And Can we um, first um, tell them about Gareth. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about Gareth a little bit too. Um, I know Tony's really excited. Why don't you talk about Gareth? Because no, you're, no, you're I just very so so hey, I'm gonna say hey everybody that's on everybody from Surf Skate Science. I'm sorry we couldn't skate today. It's rainy and wet, and Boyden Beach Skate Park has metal ramps that are, get real slippery if it's wet. So um, hopefully by Friday, if you guys miss skating today, you can come join us on Friday. We're hoping the weather's clear. Um, but um, we have um. A, a skate filmer on today that's really famous. He's done a lot of skate films all over and he's going to tell us a little bit about what it means to be a skate filmer. Um, but before we start that, you all know Gareth, right? That helps with skateboarding. How many of you guys know? Raise you your guys, hands. If you know Gareth, give me a thumbs up or raise your hand. Okay. So, so Gareth, um, he, um, he had something really cool happen yesterday. So I'm trying to figure out how to do this. It's not letting me do it. Hold on. 
kosher. I'm gonna for try. us, for us, it's a big deal. Anytime you you I'm land, try to find find this because yeah, not let me share it right now. Anytime you thinking. land in a magazine or any type of a film, now things are so different. I think, and I think media is so important. Even like the small little clips that you see, I feel like people are getting famous just by being in a a super rad video. Okay, but, so right um, here, this is but me. but we're but we're really excited um, that Gareth has this opportunity. He had a full page ad in Grapher. Oh, so we found out yesterday that he got his first full page in Grapher, so we're super stoked for him. And then, uh, if any of you know Jamie, he has a cover the cover. Make sure you go support him. So we're super hyped for Gareth. Yeah, you can go to you can go to our local surf uh, surf and skate shop. Island uh, Water Sports. We have the Thrashers, or you could always probably get it online. But it's great to support what our local scene's doing. And um, Gareth is one of our instructors, so we wanted to give him hype. I think he's on. Um, he promised he was going to be on. He's on. <laughs> um, I think he's on. Gareth, if you're on, you can unmute, unmute your mic. You can say yeah. hi. Gareth, are how you, are you? Are you stoked, Gareth? Yeah, it's really sick. Did you, Gareth, did you know you were going to be on? Uh, be on. I, you have well, an idea? I, was, I knew I was going to be in it, but I didn't know I was getting a full page. So, so Gareth actually um, is in our class and he's uh, pretty uh, consistent of being there, but he said something to me last week that kind of resonated. And this is what he said. He goes, he said to me, he goes, Yuli, count me in every time a surf skate science, but when the filmer photographer comes into town, <laughs> I gotta go, buddy. And that's what he says. And, and I will get probably a few hours notice or maybe like a day notice, but uh, Garrett, do you want to kind of just tell us how that, how you got into it and what you're like, just quick kind of like what it, what it means to you and, and all of that. Um, pretty much I skate for Lake skateboards. And right now we're working on putting a video together of a lot of just, street clips and trying to make a part happen so like once or twice a week i'll just go out to different street spots to get street clips so i'll go to like miami or jacksonville or even just like right around the corner like right around my house just wherever the spots are and we'll bring a filmer with us and we'll spend however long it takes there to get the clips or pictures yeah that's pretty much it's it. Probably super, it's probably super fast, right? Super easy. Just one try. No, uh, you don't have to. <laughs> hour and hours. Why don't you talk to us real quick about it? And then we're going to introduce our guest. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that process. Like when you, when you, when you see a trick, I mean, or see a spot, you start thinking about it. Right. And then you go back. Tell us about that process of, do you so, land? Do you, do you are you successful all the time, or is this something you have to go back to and go back to? And have you ever I had enough? Go ahead. I have so many skate spots that's like, I've been there. I tried the trick. I didn't land the trick, and I still have to go back to redo it. So it's like sometimes you'll go and you'll land it first try. Sometimes you'll go and it'll take you days or weeks or even sometimes months. It's just every spot and every trick is so different. Yeah. Yeah, really. well, that trick actually, um, the one on the spot, actually, the one on Thrasher is actually like, oh, we can walk to it from our house, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. That's insane. It's that's like a 10-minute walk. Well, awesome. Well, thanks for being on the call, man. I, I just wanted the kids to kind of know what's going on, and I really appreciate it. But guys, let's get ready uh, to hear from uh, one of the legends behind the lens. His name's Anthony. I'm going to probably butcher his last name just because I'm nervous, but Clairvo 
Clarala, Clarala, Clarala uh, is fine. Clarava, um, yeah, that's fine. I'll give you just a quick intro. Like he's filmed some of the most epic tricks in skateboarding history, from the four one one video days to today's top skaters. If you love skate videos or dream of capturing your own, you won't want to miss this right guys so we're gonna I'm gonna just introduce i'm gonna shut up and let him go for it but like um last thing i'm gonna say just with um my personal thing with video and filming so different than when i was kind of garrett's age you know we had to have a lot of patience a lot of time i think the skills might be the same but i think the technology is different i think the process is different and um but i'm pretty sure um, the experience might be the same. I mean, um, Anthony gets to go, um, travel. He gets to hang out with some of, by some of his good friends and he gets to go visit spots. Currently he's in Brazil. So, um, I'll just, uh, take it, let Anthony take it from here. Thank you, Anthony, for being here. No, thank you guys for having me. Um, first thing I want to say, congrats, Gareth. And, um, I think that we should throw on, um, on the the the, uh, the screen, his his ad, so everyone could see it, because we heard a lot about it. We, I want to see it. Oh, you didn't see it. I thought I I thought I shared it. So hold on one second. I'll do no, this. No, no. I just I just saw skateboarding videography okay. with Anthony Claravel. It's kind of boring. There you go. Awesome. You yeah, yeah. Damn. A double a double kink. So that's, that's what's up. <laughs> that's December that's what's up. Man. Sorry about that. I thought I shared it. <laughs> there you go. No, no problem. No problem. So um, uh, my name is Anthony Claraval. Um, in the next slide, you can kind of uh, learn a little bit about me or see a little bit about who I am. Um, I've been documenting skateboarding uh, on video for 30 plus years. So I know that's probably actually closer to your parents' age than than all you guys here um, uh, with us on the call, but um, but yeah, it's been a long time. Um, like uh, like you know, we were saying, it's uh, it's changed a lot. Um, so over the years, uh, with the next slide, I can show you um, you know what I've been doing. Um, I started skating in 1985, so that's like a long time ago. I was about 14 years old. Um, I. Uh, I've done a lot of work in skateboarding. Um, I, uh, I started filming with my friends um, in about 1990. So I skated for about five years. Then we started all kind of filming. The way that happened is because uh, one of our parents, one of my friend's parents had a video camera. Back then you had to have a video camera and not everyone had one. They were really expensive. Um, it was kind of like new technology. It was, it was a little bit crazy um, uh, you know, for someone to have. So we had a group of friends and one, one person, one of our friends, um, their parents had a video camera and they borrowed it and we filmed each other. So we'd all film each other and um, you know make videos. Um, I did a little zine with my friends in 1992 and it was about um, skateboarding and music. And, um, and uh, back then there was no social media. It was just kind of skate videos and magazines like Thrasher. And then um, you, know, you could either create your own magazine or make your own video. But it wasn't until 1994 that there was an, a, a new video called 411. And 411 was the first time there was a video magazine. So all the videos before, I'll, I'll, I'll go to that later, but all the videos before were from one company. So it would be from like, a, you know, a Plan B Skateboards or Spitfire Wheels or Santa Cruz or Powell. It would be a, these companies would make a video and that's the only videos that you would see. So you wouldn't be, there wouldn't be any scene videos. There's no social media. People couldn't, um, you know, share videos with their friends. Um, but that changed in 1994 with, with 411, which was the first video of its kind, which had skateboarding from all around the world, all kinds of different skaters and all kinds of different companies, all in one video. And so when that started in 1994, that inspired me a lot. It made me want to be a part of it. And then um, I started filming for 4 and one um, and I was a main cameraman there from 1996 to 2008. Um, I'm going to speed through this a little bit, but uh, I filmed uh, a lot of skateboard videos. One of the ones I'm proud of is LRG's Give Me My Money Chico. That was in 2010, long time before you guys were born. <laughs> um, and then um, I was uh, based in Asia, in China, Hong Kong, 
all around Asia, um, filming for all the major skate brands. And then more recently, I've done stuff like I was a brand manager for New Balance uh, shoes, skate shoes in Asia. Um, I was the head coach for the Philippine national skate team. So um, uh, I created a, a, a program for the Philippines, the country to have skaters. And one of the skaters went to the Olympics in Tokyo. Uh, her name is Margie. I'm actually filming with her now. Um, uh, and then um, uh, to, to today, actually, until now, I'm consulting for Red Bull skateboarding. Um, you know, well, we just talked about Jamie. Jamie is a local kid, Jamie Foy. Um, he writes for Red Bull. So I work with him. I have the pleasure of working with him um, for Red Bull and stuff. Um, but also filming and editing videos. So that's kind of what I've done from um, back in the dinosaur ages, 1985 to today. So we can go to the, the next screen. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a little bit of uh, history, theory, and application with skate videos. Um, I don't want to give you too much information. Um, you know, don't want to make this boring. Um, but uh, I want to give you a little bit of a history of like what happened um, before and how we got here with skate videos. Because um, your skate videos, what you guys like and what you want to film and how you want to see yourself skating um, are is really different from how it's been uh, in the past. Um, so we go to the next slide, please. And so skateboarding has been um, on film and video for 59 years. That's a long, long time. That's older than you guys, older than me, older than your parents. Um, uh, but it's pretty cool to think that people have been watching skateboarding and enjoying skateboarding for almost 60 years. So in the next slide, um, it's the very first ever skate video and it was called Skater Dater and it was in 1965 and it's on film and it's basically a story about a kid um, skating in his neighborhood and he kind of gets a crush on this girl. So they skate by her house and kind of like try to impress her. And, um, you know, that's the very first skate film. It was in the movie theaters and, um, and it's 1965. So that's 59 years ago. And I think it's really funny now because um, now some of the instead of like the, you know, good skaters in the neighborhood trying to impress the girls. Now, um, girls are sometimes the best skaters in the neighborhood. So I think that's it's, it's really cool and it's kind of funny. Um, uh, then, then came the golden age of skate videos. And this is the, these are the videos that inspired me when I was a kid to make skate videos. So um, some of them are like uh, the Bones Brigade video show. That was 1984, 1989, Hocus Pocus. And then we have 1990 video days or 91. And um, um, basically these are the videos that like inspired um, the guys, the older guys that you guys skate with, that inspire the guys at the skate shop, the guys who make skateboard brands. These are the videos that made them want to pick up a camera or ma made them want to film. Um, and these are all still amazing videos. If you have time, you can you, you can uh, Google them or check them out on YouTube. All these videos are still are all up there and they're really, really cool. Um, and then in the next slide, uh, we'll have, um, if you go to the next slide, Tony, <laughs> yes. So this is 411. This is what I was talking about. So all the videos before were one company and they would spend like two or three years to make a video. They put it out. It's on VHS. You'd run to the, the, the store, you'd rent the video, you'd buy the video at the skate shop and all you and all your friends would watch it. And it'd be like, you know, you watch it over and over again for months. And then in 1993, 4 and one started, which was a video magazine. And it was crazy because it had all your favorite skaters, um, all different brands, all different places from all around the world. And um, what was really crazy is at the end of the video, they had this thing on the screen and it said, you could send any contributions um, with a brief explanation of what it is to this address. And you could send this stuff in. And if it was good, they put it in the magazine. And that's the first time this ever happened. So I was like, a, you know, I was like, a, you know, a young kid, a young skater. And I saw this and I was like, wow, man, like, I want to be a part of this. I'm going to go and film my friends. I'm going to go film all the good kids in, in my scene. And I'm going to send it to 4 and one and maybe they'll put it in. Um, and if you go to the next slide, um, we uh, basically, it, 4 and one opened up the world. So before that, it was, a lot of the skate videos, all the skate videos were from California. So it was all California. The big pros had to go there. They would all be filmed there. But after 4 and one you could go um, and see skateboarding everywhere. So, um, you know, here's from EMB, which is a plaza in San Francisco, to the world. 
And in this picture, you can see EMB uh, on the top left. That was a skate plaza that everybody went to. Then on the top right was New York City. That was the Brooklyn Banks, where I'm from. And then on the bottom, you have some spots in Barcelona. And these are all like amazing skate spots. And these all became um, famous through 4 and one and through videos of those days. Because before you had to go to California, but now you could be, you know, you could skate in your scene and people could see you. And one of the big things too was that um, they'd have contests and Skate Park of Tampa came up in this time too. So Skate Park of Tampa is a super, super famous skate park. They have a, a really famous contest. All of the, you know, a lot of you guys might have been to Skate Park of Tampa. Um, we were talking about it before. It's amazing. But it started um, in around 1993. And the reason people know it is because of 4 and one and because of the skateboard uh, videos that it was in. So then, you know, people before Skate Park of Tampa, I don't know too many skateboarders who wanted to go to Tampa, but after Skate Park at Tampa, the whole world, skateboarders from Japan, um, you know, Europe, everywhere in the world, they wanted to go to Tampa and they've go, been going every year to skate the contest. So um, that's pretty cool because you guys are, you know, you guys are really close to Tampa. Um, so in the next slide, uh, you know, we started to go even beyond um, these famous skate spots and try to, you know, find new things. So in 2000, we went around the world. Um, there was a video called Around the World from 4 and one And there was uh, a skate trip to India, to China, um, you know, uh, Vietnam, Thailand, a bunch of different places around the world where now we were trying to find interesting places to skate and travel around. Um, some of us would go to like, oh, this is where my grandparents are from. Oh, it's pretty cool. Like, I want to go there and see if there's something to skate. Sometimes we'd go to like, um, you know, somewhere you saw in a movie. It wasn't even a skate movie, like a real movie. You'd be like, oh, I saw this thing in the background. We're going to go check it out. And, um, and that was, that was a, a next step. You know, it's a, kind of the globalization. So some of you guys are sitting in your home, sitting in your, in your room, watching um, on a computer. But then you can also just click and see skate spots from all around the world um, these days, when before it was only California. Um, and then we go on the next slide. I want to talk about um, uh, single parts. So before that, there was all videos with a big team, right? So it'd be like a part with everybody. And then um, in 2011, Tori Pudwell, he, he released The Big Bang, which is the very first video part, which is only one person. And that was um, on Thrasher, and it was like a really big thing. It was like, oh, this is one guy, and then he they could premiere the video and you guys can all watch it. You don't have to go to a premiere. You don't have to travel to California. You don't have to wait for it, the VHS to come and watch it on the DVD. You could just, you know, click on Thrasher at midnight on this day and you guys could all watch it for free, which is really, really uh, amazing. And then in 2016, uh, another milestone. So it was uh, Luan Oliveira from Brazil, amazing skateboarder. He had his own video part called Strike and Destroy, and that was the first video part that hit a million views. And um, in skateboarding, that was like a big, big deal because there's like a million people, a million skaters watched his video part. And, um, and uh, you know, now it's like you could go viral, you know, Mary, maybe Gareth does a crazy handrail, you know, quadruple kink, fifth, like eight kinks, who knows? And then, you know, it could go viral, like a million people could see it on Instagram. But at the time, uh, for Luan's video, a uh, million, mil, million views was like nuts. It was crazy. Um, we go to this, if we go to the next slide, that's what we got today. So this is, we're here with you guys. So, um, you know, I see some of your names, if it's Ezekiel or Alex or Sasha, you guys film with a iPhone, right? That's how you guys know it. Um, and so uh, for me, the iPhone is amazing because in that iPhone, um, if you go to the next slide, you have all the technology um, you know, you have everything. You have an editing suite, you have the camera, you have sound, you could put music, you could do everything just in that iPhone. And then, um, you know, I'm going to take you to some kind of the basics. And uh, the thing to remember, I'll show you different cameras that I use today, big famous photographer you use, but then um, you guys can do exactly the same things. You can do all the same things with, with your iPhone. Or if you don't have an iPhone, if you have a Android, I feel bad for you, but you can use it too. So um, next up, uh, this is the theory. So this is kind of the basics of skateboarding. And what you need um, in the basics, you can go back, you can go back to the next one. Um, all you need is a camera, right? On the right, you got a VX1000. That's like a famous camera. Everybody loves that. Like all the, the skateboarders, that's the coolest camera to have. Um, you have a VX1000, a camera, and a skater. That's it. 
So um, if you guys are at home and you have, um, you, know, you ask your dad, hey, dad, can you hold camera um, or put on a, on a table? That's, that's, that's it. That's all you need. And then the skater, it can be you or it can be your friend. Um, if we go to the next slide, once we have, um, you know, your friends, uh, you know, the skaters, it's like, could be, um, you know, you and your friends. It could be like the best kids in the neighborhood. It could be like the guys that are on like the skate shop team. Um, it could be the guys who are like pro skaters, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, everyone started from the beginning, the biggest, biggest skaters in the world. Like we just talked about Jamie Foy, Jamie Foy skater of the year. He's got a signature shoe. He's on the cover of this month's Thrasher. He is the man, he's everything. But he started just like you guys. He's like a young kid from Florida. Um, who just love skateboarding. Tony was saying it. That's, that's, they saw it from the beginning. So he was, you know, he was that little kid. You know, on the left, you see um, this little girl. She's an amazing skater. And then on the right, you see uh, pro skaters. But they're, they're all the same. And, and they're, all, um, they're all kind of like uh, just kind of different steps uh, for the same person. So as long as you love skateboarding and you have a skateboard, then you're a skateboarder and um and you could and you could be filmed and or you and you could film them and then we go to the next slide um so this is real basic so uh again you just need a skateboard that's what's in the middle that's what i use this is actually my my board my signature board um but it's uh just a, like a little bit wider board it's got uh, loose trucks and soft wheels and um, I use this when I ride, uh, I, I ride that skateboard and I film, um, I'll film like with fisheye that's on the left, I mean, on the right, or I, I could film with long lens um, on the left. And um, I ride that board with bigger wheels, soft wheels. So when I'm going, I, I can have a smoother picture. I can have a smoother video. Um, you can, but it doesn't really matter. You can use your own skateboard or you don't even have to skateboard. You can just stand and just hold the camera steady. But, um, but that, yeah, it does help to have, uh, if you want to film, it does help to have uh, uh, soft wheels and a little bit bigger board so you're more comfortable. If we go to the next slide, the most important thing or uh, one thing to really remember is if you're filming, um, you need a skater, right? You need the camera, but you also need a cool spot. And sometimes the spot is kind of like another person or another thing. So it's like, you know, you, the skater does the cool tricks, you're filming and you want to make it look good, but then sometimes the spot looks so good or so unique that it adds another dimension. So, um, you know, everything, uh, you know, we, Gareth talked about uh, all the spots that are near him, all the spots that are in his neighborhood. Hey, there's spots everywhere. You know, you guys are, um, can go outside, you can find something that looks cool. You can go to the skate park that's made for skateboarding, or you can go in the streets and see a lot of really, really cool stuff that's like not made for skateboarding, um, but it, because of how cool it looks, um, it's cool to do a trick on it. So maybe the trick isn't even that crazy, but the spot looks cool and it makes that trick look really, really cool. Um, so if we go to the next slide. Uh, that's another example. Of, this is a spot in Taiwan. It's at a shopping mall, actually. It's at like a, it's like the top of a sporting goods store, and there's like a, there's a supermarket there. It's kind of like a boring, um, boring spot, boring um, like strip mall. But it's got this amazing quarter pipe, natural. It looks like a skate park. It's like a dream. It's one of the best places I've ever been to skate. And and to me, that kind of shows you like, hey man, you can go somewhere, and it's like. Um, a strip mall or it's like behind Starbucks or it's at the, at the supermarket. Um, but there could be some really, really cool stuff to skate and, uh, and just kind of take advantage of that. And um, that brings us to the next slide. Sometimes you don't even have a spot, right guys? Like actually sometimes finding a cool spot is pretty hard and maybe you just have flat ground, uh, but you can still um, shoot cool video, um, cool photos with just flat ground and a skateboard. So sometimes like I said, said um it's great to have these great spots uh super eye-catching like super cool but sometimes it's just you and your friends and some flat ground and that's good enough to to film something or have a cool um a cool session we go to the next slide <laughs> um so this is me i'm i'm filming my friend rodrigo who's a pro skater and we're in korea um and again it's like uh um i'm filming um with an hd camera that's the Lumix uh, GH6 is what I use now. That's kind of like one of like kind of the top of the line cameras. You can change the lenses. I can put a fisheye on 
that's how I'm filming Rodrigo right now. I'm filming him with fisheye. We're, we're filming a line, so I'm skating with him. And then, um, but I could put different lenses on. I could film from across the street, or I could film really, really close. Um, so that's an example of like a, a digital camera. With that camera, I can, I can also shoot photos. And um, and that camera costs, like I said, um, well, it costs maybe maybe fifteen hundred dollars. And then uh, all the all the lenses are, are additional, so it can get a little bit pricey. But um, that's an example of, uh, of video cameras. Um, but then also, uh, don't be afraid. You can film with whatever you have. So the, an iPhone is actually an amazing tool. It's amazing um, uh, camera. You can um, film and actually write with the iPhone, add music, um, edit the footage, uh, do everything, upload it um, onto like something like Instagram or YouTube. So it's actually, you know, kind of like a not as good camera but you can actually do a lot more. So I guess the only thing, or one of the things I want to tell you guys is that it's not about the tool you have. It's not about like how expensive the camera is or how cool it is. All those things are, it's, it's cool. It's cool to have the coolest stuff. It's amazing to have the newest stuff. It's a, um, it's a really good feeling to have that technology and have like, Oh, this is the coolest camera. This is, I can do everything. But to be honest, it's what you do with the camera and the person behind it that's super important um, because you're just kind of trying to capture what's going on and you can do it in a whole different ways. I mean, you could even draw a picture of it, to be honest. You know what I mean? If you drew a cool picture of your friend skating, I mean, you know, people would be like, damn, that's cool. <laughs> so um, if uh, there's just a couple rules I want to leave you with. Um, these, are, uh, these are rules you cannot break. You have to listen. So I, actually, I want you guys to write these down. You might want to like, you know, pay, pay, pay attention. These are like the super, super important rules. Okay. So rule number one, next slide, is focus. So if you can, the number one thing that you have to remember, doesn't matter what camera you have, is focus. So that means that the skater is sharp, right? Where he is, if he's skating a ledge, focus on the ledge. If he's skating, um, you know, or the skater itself, focus on them because that's the only thing you can't really change. If you go on the next slide, you can see um, this is my friend Wilton. Um, he's in focus and the background's a little bit blurry because uh, he's the important thing. So sometimes you want to share the important thing or show the important thing is the skater. Sometimes the important thing is like a set of stairs or the handrail. And you want to just make sure that's in focus. That's like, you know, you can make stuff brighter later on or darker or, you know, you can you can change like uh, the size of the image. But the one thing you can't change uh, later on is focus. So we go to the next slide. Um, you know, here's an example of focusing on the ledge, like the ledge is in focus. Um, you know, it just it would suck if if your homie's skating and then, you know, you have the garbage in the back in focus and then he's blurry. It's got to be always the skater in focus. And if you go to the next slide, um, you know, sometimes with fisheye, it's really easy because then you can just kind of focus about where you think he'd be. If you're filming fisheye and you know you're always like maybe three feet away, focus about three feet away. If sometimes in the line he goes a little bit farther or a little bit closer, it's fine because, um, you know, it generally he'll be in focus. Um, that's pretty technical, but that's just something to remember. Rule number two, very important. Next slide, please. Is always keep the skateboard in frame. So that means if you're filming your friend skating, um, sometimes it's okay to cut off his head or his arm, you know, his arm goes, he does a trick and his arm goes out, that's fine. But always make sure that the skateboard and the ground are in the frame. And I'll show you in the next slide where you can see that. Um, see, in all of these, uh, these um, screen grabs, whether it's fisheye on the left or long lens on the right, um, his uh, board is always in focus. So even one of the tricks is like you show the whole body, then you can kind of zoom in a little bit um, where he's doing the trick and you show the feet and then he ride away, rides away. It's really important. Always kind of keep the skateboard in, in the focus. And I mean, in the, in the frame. Um, Cause a lot of times if you cut him off or you don't see the landing, you kind of lose the trick. So the most important thing is the skateboard. Make sure it's always in there. And, you know, sometimes you can start with his face. That's really popular in some of the videos you guys watch. It'll show the face. You can show, show the emotion of the guy coming up to, the, to skate the trick. And then it goes to his body. And then it stays on the feet. And that's like, uh, that's like something super important. And then the next slide 
is rule number three. So this is the most important rule. And um, it'd be really good if you guys write these down. And that rule number three is there's no more rules. And you go to the next slide. Um, basically, uh, you know, real, rule number three, no more rules means that you actually can do whatever you want. It's good to have focus. It's good to keep the skateboard in frame. But if you want, you could you can make it blurry. Or if you if you, if your skateboard does go out of frame for a little bit, that's fine too. Um, it's just something to think about. But what you really want to do is to try to minimize any camera shake. Um, and that means if you're filming your friend with an iPhone, you know if your iPhone just keep it steady. Maybe you want to film like this. You know, one hand on top and one hand guiding it. You know, that's going to look better. That's going to be smoother um, than just maybe like this. So just try to minimize any camera shake. Um, if the sun is like right there, try not to film into the sun. Make sure to try to have the sun behind you because um, then that's that's something that's that, that really hurts filming. Sometimes you have a really good trick, looks really great, and then you hit the sun and the sun like kind of basically, you know, uh, makes everything white in the screen and, 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 and you want to keep the sun behind you. And then if you can, um, you want to film from the front of the skater's body and show their face, right? So uh, what was great about skateboarding and great about skateboard videography is to see people's personalities and see how they skate and trying to show their face a little bit and, 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 sh and, um, and um, show who they are is a great way to do that. So if you can, um, show their face if possible. And then the last one sounds super simple, but keep your lens clean. So even if it's an iPhone, maybe you're going to film, hey, just, you know, maybe just wipe the lens because sometimes it's, it's got a smudge on it or it's been in your pocket or whatever. So a uh, really simple thing to make everything look good is to keep the lens clean. And if we go to the next slide, um, you also have to remember to do whatever you want. So these are like, these rules are fake. So I just gave you some fake rules um, because the reality is um, you are, you guys are creative. You guys know what you like. You guys watch skate videos, basically, um, you know, copy the things that you like. Don't do the things that you don't like. If you want to experiment, feel free to do that. Um, you know, there's these rules and follow them if you want, but the, you know, just feel free to do whatever you want and actually have fun with it. Um, and then the next slide um, is, uh, just being careful. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, we're skating in the skate park and that's a very safe place to do it. If it's boring, you want to get in the street, that's totally fine. But just remember sometimes it's not, um, you can't skate in the street where you guys live or, you know, the cops come or security guard comes or whatever. Be really respectful of other people, be respectful of pedestrians and stuff. And, um, and uh, you know, just be conscious of uh, you sharing the street with other people. And the skate park is the place to go for skating. Um, and it's allowed and you're sharing it with skaters. But if you're in the street, sometimes you want to um, also uh, be understanding that you're sharing it with, uh, with other people. And um, the next slide is editing. So this is a lot of information. I know this might be too much for you guys. But if you guys uh, have any questions at the end, um, feel free to answer. And you can also um, message me. Um, you could you know, talk to the guys at the school. I'm sure um, you know, we all have a lot of information. Um, but so this is uh, a little bit more after filming. What do you do? How do you edit? And uh, you can go to the next slide. And so back in the day, what we used to do is we had, um, uh, we'd actually have two like VCRs. Uh, you guys don't know what that is. But there's like a, it's a video, um, it's a tape, it's like a, like a big cassette tape with a video and you put it in and we'd have uh, two of those and we'd make an edit. So now, um, luckily enough, all you need is either your iPhone or if you want to get advanced, you have your computer and some kind of music. Um, and basically with those two things, you can do whatever you want. You can edit everything. Um, go to, if you go to the next slide, um, we understand that like, uh, basically everything that we do, um, Sorry, it's uh, giving me a hard time. It's not moving for some reason. I think actually that, that, no, that is, that, that's it. That's the last slide. Actually, that's the last slide. Um, so I, I guess I wanted to say is that, uh, everything, um, we have now. So these are the VHS, uh, tapes. There are these big bulky tapes. You put it in a machine and you can watch them on your television. Um, and these are actually four in one videos and they came out every two months. Uh, but now, you know, we don't need those. We don't have those. You guys can watch um, 
everyone skating all around the world, um, you know, in real time on uh, Instagram or TikTok. You can see people do tricks that they did like 10 minutes ago. Um, and it's, it's really, really cool. And you can, you know, you can film yourself. You, you guys can film your friends. And then those, those videos can be seen like in, you know, 10 minutes all around the world. So, um, so yeah, that's the, uh, a little bit of uh, skateboard videography. Anthony. Can you yep, hear yep. me? Anthony, can yep, you hear can. me? Can you see my screen? I have something special yeah. to show the kids. Yes. Can yes, you guys please see show, uh, Can you guys see the four in one VHS? Yeah, this, is, this is a VHS tape, guys, that he's talking about. An actual 411 VHS. This is what it looked like. Look how big this thing is. See? Okay. Amazing. <laughs> what? What's the This is number 57. See how it's marked? Cool. Anyways, sorry. So, um, so yeah, so so um, what he was saying about using your phones, like I'll take I'll take Gareth and and Malik and Freddie and Eden down to Lot Eleven, and by the time we get home from Miami, just that drive, they have a couple video edits already done in their phones on the way home. And so what's really cool is he was talking about Jamie Foy and we have Zion Wright and Alex Sergente and Pedro and Fabi. They're all from down here. They would go skate together and they would always put up new videos all the time. So they would have a filmer with them and they would go do videos. And right away when they were getting home, they're putting up little clips of them skateboarding because now because they have a, a phone like an iPhone. So it's really cool. So they, they're able to film and edit and do something all before they get home from the skate park a lot of times. So Well, back in the day, it used to be a parent, actually. I remember uh, seeing, you know, Pedro and those guys, and it used to be like a, a mom or a dad that used to, you know, <laughs> one of the dads at the skate park got a camera, you know, and... Dad was the first filmer. Yep, dad was the filmer. So does anybody have any questions? Um, for Anthony about filming, because that's part of your homework this week is going to be about about filming and taking photos of skateboarding. Does anybody have any questions? You can unmute. You have to unmute yourself, and then you can ask. And then Yuli's showing you some different filming stuff. Like here. this was like our little thing, you know. We used to go hang out with our kids, and we used to uh, we got a camera, or something like this. And then we just go and film our kids with something like this. So oh, cool. Yeah. I have a VX2100 too, but that's upstairs. My mom has a camera up in her closet. I have one too. See something like this? And then it had the tape in, it had the tape in right here. And you would go mm -hmm. and, and you would right. mm -hmm. get a, a, like a, we used to call it a death lens. Used to be this big thing that, yeah. Anyways, all right. I'll let Anthony talk. Sorry. So, who has questions? Anybody have questions? I see. Uh, I see down here. You can go ahead and unmute and ask a question. I see you have your hand raised. Better go. I am muted. Quick go. You said you raised your hand. You had a question. No, you wanted to ask him a question. No, I didn't. <laughs> ask because away. You can. That's why you guys I am ask don't feel embarrassed. You can ask anything. Yeah, Ryder, go for it. I didn't have anything to ask. Um, you raised your hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anybody else? I see. Alex, do you have a question? You can bump yourself. Alex, you can unmute yourself because you were raising your hand. So go ahead and unmute yourself, buddy, and we're going to hear you. And then, Joseph, you can go next because I saw your hand up as well. So Alex, or Joseph, you can start since Alex hasn't unmuted himself. What software do you recommend for, like, editing videos? Um, for me, I use Premiere. Um, I love it because Wait, how do you, I'm how used do you to it. That? It's P R E M I E R. Uh, it's made by Adobe. Adobe. It's kind of one of the top editing, um, uh, you know, softwares. I use that because um, I have it on my computer, but I also have it um, a version of it on my phone. 
So I can edit um, on the computer, I can edit on the phone, um, and then I could do it if it's something for just social media, something really simple or something really complicated, like, you know, like a long movie with like a lot of things, I can do it. Um, it's kind of expensive, I'll be honest. I pay every month for it. Uh, there are there there are other programs. Um, one that's really that's actually free that you can use. It's called DaVinci, uh, D A V I N C I, and that's like a really good, uh, very very uh, top of the line um, uh, program. That's like uh, you can get a free version of it really well. So, um, but uh, I I also can use sometimes I just use iPhone. Um, I mean iMovie on the phone or really simple things or sometimes even edit like in Instagram and stuff. Like just like, you know, I, I don't really need, sometimes I don't need to have like a, a crazy complicated program, but when I do it's, I use Adobe Premiere. I see a few Next question. I think Alex has a question, Zoe, Sasha and Victor. So let's do Alex next. You ready, Alex? Yeah. I just asked my question. Yeah, oh, yeah. Alex. Right, Alex Joseph, did you ask yours? No. Who's next? Okay, Joseph. Uh, I was going to say, what program do you use to edit the videos? He just said. So yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. Check what out uh, Premiere or DaVinci. So the the one I use is called Premiere, P R E M I E R. It's by Adobe, and there's another one, uh, but I pay for that. It's really good. But there's another one that's kind of free, and it's called DaVinci. And that's D A V I N C I, but um, uh, you can also use just uh, iMovie, which is on your phone if you have an iPhone. Um, that's a good one too. It's really simple and it's free. So. Oh. Okay, Zoe, you want to ask a question? Yeah, um, I had a question about like when you're filming like fast tricks and stuff. Like, what would you use for like what setting? Um, it depends. If your camera um, has settings, uh, uh, the what if there's a lot of good light, then I would have a higher shutter speed. So something like 500, depending on the camera. The camera I use, the uh, fast shutter speed is 500. Um, some other video cameras go up to like 1,000. Um, and then uh, basically, um, if your question is how do I film like something that's fast, uh, yeah. I would make sure I would be kind of far enough away um, either so either it's long lens I'm far enough away because if he's moving fast the farther you are and then the more you're showing so if he's moving super fast you don't want to you don't want it to go out of the screen right that's like the worst thing mm -hmm. so if you're farther away and you're you know like let's say I'm farther away than I'm just that my hand is a skater and you have this much space back and forth so they can move really fast they're not going to go out of frame if you're really close and like the skaters like here and they move really fast you might lose them. So just kind of understand if you're, if they're really moving fast, either you're moving fast with them, like on a skateboard, or like you're filming far enough away that you know they're not gonna go outside the screen. Um, and then if they're, if it's brighter, you can have different settings um, that show kind of how fast it is. When the shutter speed goes higher, you can see the motion better. If the shutter speed is, is slower, it looks like more blurry. So sharper okay. is a higher shutter speed. But and, it's pretty pretty technical. Hopefully that answers a little bit of your question. Yeah, and then I have like another one for like if you want to do like a slow mo video, mm -hmm. like I like I always try to film myself skating with like slow mo video like on iPhone, but it always mm -hmm. ends up like really weird and blurry, and I don't know how like, how to make it look actually better. So so that's the reason that you if you're filming slow or you want it to be slow. The, the more frames, um, the easier it is to slow it down. So that means that like on your iPhone, if there's like a 24 setting, like 24 uh, frames, that's, that's, it looks really cool, but it's terrible for slowing it down. 30 is also not that good. 60 is what you want if you want to slow it down. So you would want to film on 60. And then you can go to 120 or, or I think there's even 240. Um, that's really good for slow-mo, but the problem is the higher you go, the more light you need. So if you want to film 120 or 240, you want to be outside, like really good sunlight, like bright day. If you find yourself in a skate park, then you, you know, like actually 60 is probably the highest you can go. So the reason it's 
if you're filming it um, and you want to make slow motion, you need good light. That's the that's the thing. Okay. Um, so, so make sure you, if you film the the brighter it is outside, then you can have a higher shutter. And like I said, 120 is like going to be amazing slow motion. That's like what you see, like you know the crazy slow motion in the in the iPhone. Um, but 60 is good too. But um, it's going to look best the more light you have. Okay, so just making sure I understand, like, the more frames and the more light you have, the better the slow mo like, videos will look, right? Yeah, so, so, okay. um, so like, an uh, iPhone, if you watch an iPhone video, right, the video, mm -hmm. it's, tw it's 29 frames in the video, 29 frames. Um, okay. And you want to make it slow motion. So if you film 60, that means you have double the frames to make slow. So instead of it's like, like, like that, it's like more frames so you can see it more clearly. And then if you have 120, it's four frames more. So you get super slow, you know, super clear. Or if it's 240, it's, it's more, it's six or something. And it's like super, super clear. So the more frames you have, the more slow motion, the, the better the slow motion will look. Um, so it sounds really complicated, but um, also if you want that to look good, you need a lot of light, like good light. So, um, so just know that like, so regular, regular TV or YouTube or, um, uh, iPhone, it's 29 frames a second. But, okay. uh, so if you film above 29, you're going to get a clear, a uh, sharper slow motion. Okay. Thank you. And if he saw in some Japanese pic uh, his pictures in the slides, he had lights that he brought with him to film sometimes. Mm -hmm. so they have sometimes oh. like if it's, yeah. sometimes if I'm at a skate park and it's really dark in the skate park, I'll have a little light on the camera. Or, um, or sometimes I'm like, you know, your friend wants to film a trick and it's like 6 p.m. and it's about to get dark. They're like, hey, let's come back uh, Sunday morning. It's going to look way better. Um, and then some, that's sometimes like, what, you want, what you want to do. OK, and thank you. Oh. You're welcome. And I think, I think Victor had a question. Is that right, next? I'll let you go next. Victor, you got a question? Yeah. I was wondering, what does the fish l lens do? Like, how so, does, how does it? So, um, okay, do uh, it, it's really, it's it's really, yeah, it's really, it's really easy. So, um, with a with without the fish eye, right? Let's say a normal lens, your your friends like this, right? But with a fish eye, it it distorts it, it makes it closer. So then, all of a sudden, it's like this. You know what <laughs> I mean? So it's you're the same distance away, but with a fish eye, you can see like you're like you feel like you're this close, and then without the fish eye, you're like this. So because you're skateboarding and like you're doing tricks, and it's like you see the body and the board, um, fish eye is good, so you can be. You, it makes you feel like you're right next to the guy, or you're right next to the skater, um, and then it makes like the ledge look bigger or the handrail look bigger, like Gareth's, Gareth's um, uh, grind on the rail. You, if you film with a fisheye, it's going to look like more epic and more like, wow, if you're from far away, it can look good too. It's just different. You know, it shows a, it's just a different aspect. So the fisheye is, um, so you go closer and you can fit more in the frame. Cool. Thank you. So you're I welcome, think buddy. Sasha was next and then Ryan. So Sasha, you have a question? Sasha, you got a question? Yeah, I had a question about the editing. I have an editing software called CapCut. Will that work? Yeah, CapCut is really good. Um, CapCut is made for iPhone, and it's kind of made for Instagram, um, for TikTok. Uh, it's yeah. it's really really good. Yeah, it's 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 really really good. It just depends on how what you want to do with it. So sometimes if I'm editing something for Instagram, basically I just need to cut the trick, maybe add some music on top, and I'm finished you know, mm -hmm. or zoom in a little bit. And CapCut is totally fine. Um, yeah. uh, we talked about uh, some other things like DaVinci or Premiere. And that's like, if I have four different angles of the same trick and I want to like change the color on like angle two and three to match angle number one. And then I like, oh man, um, a, a car drove by. And then that, that, that sound like sounds it's like super, you know, drowns out the skater. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to get another try and I'm going to cut that audio out and I'm going to use that or make the grind sound like, like, uh, like uh, louder. Um, but, but if you want to just make videos for, you know, your uh, Instagram or, or something for social media, CapCut is, is great. 
Um, it's really, really good. I've used it before and a lot of people use it. It's, so it's more about like what you want to do with it, you know? Yeah. I use it for my Instagram for other stuff, but. Yeah. So I mean, it's, it's, it's totally cool. And then to be honest, like CapCut and um, a better program, a lot of the things are the same. So there's more features, but the essence of it is the same. So if you mastered CapCut and you go to like Premiere, it might take a couple of days to kind of get used to it. But in the end, you're like, oh, it's kind of the same thing. You know, you're yeah. just cutting up the footage, add some sound, you know, maybe some put some effects and, and you're good. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're Sorry. welcome. Next, um, Ryan, if you want to unmute yours, you guys can ask the question. It's actually Ira's question, so I'll I let know, it back. Ira. Hi, Ira. What's up, buddy? Hi. Hey, you, Ira. What is your favorite structure to film on? Like, um, my favorite, like, skate obstacle? Um, okay, I'll be really honest. Sometimes um, I have a friend who's like, I want to skate this crazy stairs. It's 20 stairs. It's huge. It's like, um, you know, like really big gap or really big handrail. And, um, and that, and that stuff is super, super cool because it's kind of like super exciting and, um, and like, uh, like maybe a little even dangerous. And, um, and you're like, you have like adrenaline and it's like kind of a mission. You have to go there with your friend and your friend gets psyched up and he's like, I'm going to do it like this try. And like, that's really, really cool. Um, but I also like, uh, like, like manual pads, um, maybe something that's like a mellower obstacle, but people do really hard tricks on it. And so like, maybe it's a trick, like a flip into a manual and then flip out again. Um, and it might take them a couple of days and uh, the obstacle is not scary or anything, but it's super cool when they finally get it. So I like those two kinds of things. Um, sometimes like it's the really big, like, like, wow, this is crazy spot. Or sometimes it's like the smaller, cool, like mellower spot, but you can do like, a really harder trick on it. Thank you. Thanks. So I think <laughs> You're welcome. Zoe had a, a quick question. Yeah, I had another question. So um like we have a GoPro. So like what angle would you suggest for like filming with GoPros? Um GoPros are amazing. Usually they're fish eye. Um most GoPros have like a built-in fish eye. Mm -hmm. So that's why you can be really, really close. Um, I know some of the newer ones have a few different settings. You can get a little bit farther away. But for me, GoPro is kind of like the best for showing like kind of having somebody feel like they're skating. Um, you know, the viewer has feels like they're the ones skating or they're with somebody skating. So, um, you know, get with the GoPro, get close. Um, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and that, that's the kind of thing. And also the good thing about GoPro is you have pretty much all automatic settings. So you don't have to really mess with it. It just always looks good. But usually with the GoPro, it's uh, fisheye. So you want to stay close. Yeah, ours is, I think, fisheye. But like, would you like, for example, if you were like, um, like jumping a box, would you mm -hmm. suggest like, like shooting from like above the box or like right below? Let's well, sometimes, so if you, if you, if you want to make the box look big, you want to go low. If okay. you want to show more of the skater, maybe you want to go a little bit higher. Um, and then depending on the tricks, some tricks look good lower and some tricks look higher. Like, um, you know, if you, if you grind something or if somebody does a slide, like a tail slide and you go mm -hmm. low, it's going to look cool. But if you do a, a nose blunt, like if the ledge is here yeah. and you do a nose blunt, you want to go high because if you go too low, you lose the trick. So if it's a uh, nose blunt, you go higher. If it's like a tail slide, maybe you want to go lower. But I mean, a good thing is just kind of like maybe um, just practice and just to see, you know, like try to film both and see which one you like best. Or maybe watch a video that you really like. Oh, like, I really like how that looked. And then kind of see how they, oh, they were really low, close to the person. Um, and it looked good. So. Okay, thank that's you. That's the best way for me. You're welcome, Zoe. Did you on me? Hey, Anthony. Mm -hmm. uh, Zoe's a ripper. She's from Brazil. I think it's Zoe. Oh, awesome. Yeah. He's in Brazil right now, Zoe. Yeah, I'm in Brazil. I'm in Sao Paulo. That's where my mom's from. Awesome. A There's a amazing actually. skaters here. Yeah. Amazing skaters here. <laughs> freaking get so my babysitter is from Brazil. That's awesome. Tell, tell me a question. 
So if you if you have a question, you can go ahead and unmute real quick and uh... Um, I was actually gonna tell you guys, um, my sister has a camera right here. Oh, oh awesome. <laughs> what kind of camera is it? Um, um it was my mom's old one, but she gave it to my sister. Uh Nikon, it says. Yeah. Um, Awesome. That's a really good camera. I used to shoot a lot with Nikon cameras. Yeah, it's a Nikon uh, DX uh, 5.1.35.2. 5. 5.56G. Yeah, I don't yeah. even know what that means. <laughs> you can, you that's, can a, that's a definitely cool camera. Yeah, it's, you a, should go up. it's a Nikon. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You should go take it for a spin. Shoot some yeah, photos I'm trying to get the battery out because it needs to charge, but I can't get it out. Well, hopefully, well, a really good thing is you could look on YouTube and just type in the name of that camera, and you could probably download the PDF uh, instruction book, um, and and you could download it in any language. And yeah, uh, I I've, I've used you. computers. I mean, computer. I've used this camera a lot. My mom's cool, a professional cool. photographer. What is what does your mom shoot? Well, she uh, used, she really she shoots like, photos of uh, she um baby photos. Like, um, of oh. like boyfriend or girlfriend or husband and wife, like posing with the baby before like, it's born, like fat, like family photos. Yeah, I like that. Awesome, like pregnancy awesome. photos. That's what she shoots. Well, she that's used kind of the exact so opposite of skateboarding. Like oh. <laughs> yeah, no, not <laughs> her friends. She takes photos too. Um, awesome. Took the photos for Chelsea. Ira has one more question, and then I'll, we'll let Anthony go because he's got to go film a whole bunch of skaters. All right. Cool. Um, can you film with a drone or something? You or... can. You can for sure. Um, I think uh, drones are super cool, uh, but it's also like I like to have like maybe one shot from a drone in an edit because sometimes um it can be too much. Uh, it that's me personally. I think everything is cool, like like long lens, fisheye, drone, um, you know, anything. It's just like, it depends how you use it. But drones are actually amazing because it gets you, it gives you an image that you don't normally see. So unless you have the drone, you're never going to see what something looks like from 20 feet in the air. Um, and that's awesome. You know, that, sh that kind of uh, shows some perspective. You know, like we were talking about like, what I like to film, if I like to film like a really big spot, like big stairs, and you have a drone shot from the top, it can show how big it is really. It's a really, really impressive. So, drones are cool. Take pictures. Yep, you have a, a little oh. drone. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Wow, Thank then you, you know, man. So I have, I have one more question, I guess, to wrap us up. So since we're doing... We're doing engineering the future this semester. So we're talking about mm -hmm. what will things look like, say, in 30 years from now. So how do you think filming skateboarding and just how we see skateboarding is going to change in 30 years from now? Do you, you really want to know? Yeah, yes. I do. Because um, I, I do, I think, I think my opinion is that uh, all the skateboard videos that we watch now and that we're making, we're filming, we're filming a skateboarder, right? And showing a skateboarder um, what they're doing. I think in 30 years, skateboard videos will be, um, you experiencing doing the trick. So right now we're watching somebody, we're watching Jamie Foy, and Jamie does a 20 stair front crook and you're like, wow, that's crazy. And it's like three angles of Jamie doing the trick. I think in the future, it's gonna be um, a video or an experience where you're doing a 20, 20 stair front crook and you're, you're experiencing like what Jamie sees, how he pinches, how he locks in and the experience of him doing the trick. I think that's, I think in 30 years, that's what we're going to see. Um, so it won't be like passively watching somebody skateboard. It'll be the experience of doing those crazy tricks or those, we could um, have been you know. Skating on top of the building that Zion Wright was skating on the other day. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I think, I think it's going to, it's going to be more of a 3D immersive experience than a traditional, like sitting down, watching somebody else do it. It's going to be like, Maybe the filmers of the future are going to have 10 cameras on their body and they do these tricks. And so that like people who, who watch it, you know, or experience it um, will have the feeling of doing it. 
So yeah, that's 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 what I think in thirty years. Last, How we get there, I'm not sure. Yeah. Anthony, one last question. I know this is kind of like, but one last question. Uh, in your experience, what's the tiniest camera you've ever seen? Like what uh, the technology now? Like what are the? I mean, you know, my friend has some um, some Ray Bans, and there's two cameras right here. Wow. Um, right, yeah. Like so, there's two cameras. And so it's got, I think it's only like 90 seconds or like 60 seconds, but you turn on the camera and you can film um, what you see, you know, whatever. It's like, it's that big. So they're, the, the cameras are tiny. They're right here. One, like one here, or, or there's one in the middle. And so to me, that's like kind of the, the smallest camera. I mean, the smallest good camera that you can see like amazing footage would probably be like a GoPro. I mean, they're just, you know, they're the size of this, you know, iPod case, right? So, I mean, there's that. Yeah, but I have seen, I have seen, um, I mean, in the future, like I said, maybe skate videos will have like, you know, it'll be like a hundred cameras on your clothing and like your stuff. And then those hundred cameras all have a technology that like, you know, puts it all together and it, you know, it, it allows you to like look around in, in a immersive space or with glasses or something. Who knows? Yeah. Let's, let's, let's talk in 30 years. Yeah, let's see. Um, well, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're really busy there in Brazil filming and, and we really appreciate it. It was really cool to hear from you. You guys want to say thank you real quick to Anthony? You can unmute. Tell him thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Anthony, we'd also... Thank you guys, man. Thank you. Thank you. Anthony, you. if you're ever, um, if you're ever you. in Florida, we'd I'll love to have you at class. Take time. We'd love right. to have awesome. you at class. If you're ever in South Florida. Florida. Yes. Randy, and if you, if you guys have any more questions, you guys you can so send much. a message to my Instagram and ask me about camera stuff or whatever. Thank you. But, yeah. Whenever Hope I start guys, filming, I'm, I'm probably going to have like a million more questions. You. Awesome. Sasha, what are you doing? Thank you. Thank you. We'll share some of the videos with you that they do. All right. Awesome. That'd be amazing. Thank you so much. Take guys. care, guys. Thank Have you. a great day. Bye. That's a good home thing, guys. Go grab a camera and go film something. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.